Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm Susan Axelrod. I'm the editor of Culture, and I'm very pleased to welcome you all this afternoon um, as we start thinking and talking about the holiday season, even though it's not yet uh, July. Um, but we know that's a necessary thing when you're in uh, the retail business uh, or in lots of businesses, actually, in the magazine business, we work way ahead, too. So um, we're very glad you're here, and we're going to hear from um, two women from Laura Chanel, Marin French, and St. Benoit Creameries out in California. We have Kelly Levin, who is the marketing communications manager for all three of those brands. And we also have Michelle Adams, who's the national account manager for Laura Chanel and Marin French. And they're going to be talking to you, as you know, about um, the wonderful holiday offerings they have and, and giving you some ideas for how to merchandise them and how to get your customers to buy them. Um, before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping details. Um, please use the chat feature or the Q&A to ask your questions, and we will do our best to answer them throughout the presentation, but we will also have a dedicated 10 minute or so Q&A period at the end. So um, the, I'm not gonna take up too much of your time because these ladies have a lot to share with you today. So um, let's get started. Thanks, Susan. All right. Um, so I'm, the, like Susan said, I'm the marketing communication manager for all three brands, Laura Chanel, Marin French Cheese Co. and St. Benoit Creamery. Um, we're lucky enough to have three Northern California brands making different products in different creameries, um, but we do get the support and knowledge of our fourth generation dairy family parent company. Um, and we share certain resources like sales and marketing, which is why we are presenting all three of our companies today. Um, so I'm super excited to talk about holiday products. And some of these are just day-to-day -day items that we see uptick in trends for, or we just really suggest for celebrations and gatherings. Um, so we're gonna touch on some flavor combos pairing ideas with drinks, cheese board add-ons, uh, recipe ideas, things to get you excited about incorporating cheese into your upcoming gatherings. Um, so how we're gonna do it is first, Michelle is gonna start us off with Laura Chanel. She's gonna talk a little bit just briefly on the company and then talk through um, some of the products. I will move on to Marin French and finish us off with our Saint Benoit dessert. If you received a sample package and um, you wanna taste along with us, we recommend you get your products out now and feel free to just taste as we're talking. We're not gonna do a product by product, you know, literal tasting, but we welcome you guys to try the flavors as we're chatting about them. Add any comments or questions into the chat, um, any even exciting ideas for recipes that you like to use or would like to use. Um, and yeah, and then we'll answer any questions. So that's kind of the flow. And Michelle, please introduce yourself and start us off with Laura Chanel. Thanks, Kelly. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. It's a pleasure to be among old and new cheese friends. Um, I recognize some of the names on the attendee list. Hi, Gail. Hi, Lisa. And for the new ones, I'm Michelle. It's very nice to meet you. Um, I've been in specialty cheese for over 10 years, but like many of you, I accidentally discovered it, right? We like, I think we all have a, I fell into the cheese world story. Um, I'm a Vietnamese American child of immigrants. So I certainly did not grow up eating cheese and I definitely didn't grow up saying, I want to sell cheese. So it's kind of interesting that I'm here today. This was not something that I dreamed of, but it's something that I love. Um, Fun fact, before I ever represented cheesemakers, you know, in my last 10 year career, um, I actually mentored at risk youth um, in a nonprofit I co-founded in San Diego. So while I ate a lot of cheese pizza, I certainly <laughs> didn't know anything about cheese um, and I still have a lot to learn. So I say all that because um, I don't know what path you took to get here. I'm sure there's a ton of fun stories in this room but I'm excited to talk about Laura Chanel with you today. So whether you've come knowing a lot or a little, 
I hope you leave knowing just a little bit more today. Okay, so shall we get into it? Um, if you have the cheese in front of you, great. If you don't, sit back and enjoy. I have a lot of cheese in front of me right now, which I'll show you in a bit. But before we dive into that, I want to quickly talk about our founding cheesemaker. If you're new, Laura Chanel friends, um, I, I'd love to tell you the story. You should know that Laura Chanel um, actually started this company over four decades ago. It doesn't sound like a long time for a company, but that's a long time in cheese years. The specialty cheese industry is only that long. Um, I'm sorry, only that old. So not only is Laura Chanel our founding cheese maker, she's actually um, a pioneer of the American cheese industry. Um, and like many pioneers of the American cheese industry, Mary Keene of Cypress Grove, Judy Shad, you know, um, the Cowgirls, Vermont Creamery, all those founding specialty cheese industries who happen to be awesome women, by the way. Um, like many of those pioneers, Laura Chanel's story started with her appreciation and love for the animals. Um, she acquired some goats and started raising her own and naturally ended up with a lot of milk. And so when you have a lot of milk, you start experimenting what to do with it. You can only have so many friends that you can share goat milk with, right? So she started experimenting with cheese making, but the problem was there wasn't any kind of formal training available to make cheese. You know, today we've got the cheese school in San Francisco. And if you go on Amazon, you can actually order a cheese making kit for 30 bucks. But there was nothing like that back then, right? So Laura had to go all the way to France. Um, that's where all the good stuff is made. And um, that's where she learned the craft from experts that held generations of knowledge and expertise. So while she was there, she learned how to raise goats, um, how to create solid milk production and um, how to make fantastic cheese. Um, she knew that in the US, all we really knew, the everyday consumer really knew about was you know, craft singles. And she wanted to bring that back to California and bring it back to the States. Um, there's something that Laura said when she returned to California. She said, I told myself that if I can't live like this with goats and cheese, I'm going back to France. So we're so thankful that she brought, she didn't stay in France and that she brought all her love and knowledge of cheese making back here in California. So in California, in Northern California specifically, um, she started her business, her cheese business in farmer's markets, started selling cheese to everyday consumers and chefs that happened to pass by. And that's where she was first discovered by the Alice Waters of Chez Panisse, um, who featured a salad using Laura Chanel's goat cheese, marinated herbs and oil and coated in breadcrumbs and delicate place, delicately placed on a salad. So this seemingly simple salad became an iconic California dish, right? Every, everyone knows what a goat cheese salad is, but 40 years ago, people didn't. Um, but because of this plate, it sparked a new growing demand for goat cheese in America. And along with the rise of the food to table movement, Laura quickly became recognized in the food world for her high quality cheese made with high quality milk. And Kelly and I are both proud to continue her legacy today. All of our cheese makers are proud. So now that we've talked about the cheese maker, I'd love to talk about the cheese. Um, as Kelly mentioned, um, today we're focusing on holiday. I think all of our cheeses have a place every day on your table, but today I'm gonna highlight four Laura Chanel cheeses that we think are perfect for a holiday gathering. Um, first, we've got two fresh goat cheeses. We've got eight of these in our line, but um, these are the two that we think would be awesome for your holiday table. This is, um, I'm sorry, I'm holding the wrong one. This, the one on the cheese board is correct, but um, it's our cranberry. <laughs> Um, goat cheese and it's our black truffle goat cheese. Um, four ounce logs, the perfect size for a cheese board and the perfect size for your holiday recipe. And then we've got a marinated goat cheese, um, marinated in um, olive oil and black truffle oil. Um, and then we've got our creamy aged goat brain. So these are four cheeses that we think um, you'd love to have in consumers. They're flavors that are very holiday friendly, um, but also flavors that you can incorporate in dishes you will already prepare for the holidays. So I'm gonna walk you through some ideas, really some recipe concepts. I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to do something, 
but I'm going to give you some general ideas that you can go back home and Google and share with your customers. Um, and the goal is to really make cheese the star for your next holiday gathering, like move over ham, move over <laughs> turkey, right? Like let's, let's make cheese the centerpiece, right? Um, okay. So I can't move on talking about cheese and parties without talking about the holiday cheese board. Um, I get that the holiday cheese board is nothing new, especially for this audience, but I do, and I do want you, our party guests and our customers to expand their experience upon the cheese board, but I don't want to ignore the cheese board because it does play an important role at a party. And this is really what most customers walking into your stores are looking to put together, right? There's so much content out on social, social media about how to put together a cheese board. So there's so many people flooding in with guidance from you on how to build one. So I don't wanna ignore the importance of that. Um, I also wanna say I love a good cheese board because it's something you could put together with ingredients that are readily available in your pantry and it requires zero cooking technique. So even if you don't know how to cook and you don't feel comfortable in the kitchen, you can do it. And then I love the grand display of it that can make a dramatic first impression when your guests walk through the door. And my favorite, favorite reason for a cheese board is it allows guests to help themselves while you fuss over other dishes, right? Like I yes. think <laughs> there's, I've had so many parties where I've bought myself like an extra hour from burning something and having to make it again because there was a cheese board where people were happy with. So saved by the board. That's just what I love about holiday cheese board. So um, I don't have to tell you how to build one. You guys are all cheese people. You guys can build one in your sleep. I'm guessing that most of you if you're like me, most of your friends and family, um, they always ask you to bring the cheese board, right? So like they think you have a personal cheese case at home and they're not wrong. And they're not wrong. I mean, if you open my fridge, it does look like a cheese case, but um, I know a lot of us- can't show up without cheese. Like no, you can't show up without cheese. <laughs> it's super offensive, right? If there, I, I, I've gotten in trouble for not showing up with cheese. Me so too. I owe- <laughs> I always have to have some in my fridge. Um, so I do, even though you guys can do it, I think I do think it's kind of important to kind of break down like what a cheese board is. I mean, you know, I know you can build it in your sleep, but most everyday customers don't know how to do that. So I'm just gonna go through some quick personal guidelines for how to build a cheese board. I've got one in front of me, so I'm just gonna like pan back. Let me just push this back. I'm sorry, it disappeared. Okay, excuse me. Okay, there's my cheese board. I'm just gonna hold it like that and then I'm gonna go back to me. <laughs> so here are my personal guidelines. Three to five cheeses, mixing texture, soft, hard, firm aged, uh, mixing some animal milks. You know, on this board, I've got Laura Chanel Amberin French cheese. So I've got the goat and the cow covered. Um, I've got some soft, fresh goat cheese that you can have with the logs. And then I've got some aged stuff. So aged goat and some aged cow milk cheeses. Um, you want two to three meats, prosciutto, spicy salami, always go to favorites. Um, you want something fatty, something that can really stand next to some of our meatier cheeses, like our goat free and the cheeses that Kelly's going to talk to you about. You want some three to four fruits, right? So you wanna mix texture, some dried, some fresh, some sweet, some acid, some warm holiday colors. So, you know, for the holidays, I wanna bring in some of those warm holiday colors. So for fruits, I want some ruby red pomegranates, I want some cranberries, I want some persimmons, dried apricots, winter citrus, winter citrus, like kumquats. Um, if you can't source those things, you could do dried cranberries. Um, I personally love Korean Asian pears. Like that's what I just have a ton of on my, my board, not right now, because they're out of season, but around the holidays, I'm just like plowing through that kind of fruit. Um, and then you want one to two spreads. Figure cherry preserves are always great. And of course, honey in your pantry. One to two nuts, pistachios are green and perfect. Marcona almonds, walnuts. And I like to add some briny bonuses. So like, you know, some pickled um, peppers and some uh, pickled little baby pickles. Um, pickled carrots, pickled cucumbers, salty olives. And then if you're, if you really have time, you can make some bonus bites, I call them, which you can do like little crostinis with cherry preserves and you could stuff goat cheese in their olives. 
Um, and you can like roll the goat cheese logs in like pistachios. So I think the cranberry log would look beautiful rolled in some crushed um, roasted pistachios. Um, you can either slice it and display it or you can just have your guests enjoy it and break into it on their Big own. Is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then lastly, you want to garnish with something that's green, you know, some sage, some rosemary. And um, if you've got some tree pine, you know, some something falling off your tree, you can add that in, you know, a little added greenery to your board. Um, and that's really, that's really what it is, right? So do, so I guess in summary, do what you always do for a cheese board, but switch out for some warm colors, warm flavors, winter fruits, and some seasonal garnishes. Like, um, if you go to the next, if you can show a slide really quick. Um, uh, yes, we have a couple people who really want to see the board. Is there any oh, way you yeah. can show it by tipping your <laughs> yeah. screen down? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Okay. And I love what you're saying, oh, Michelle, Lord. about most of like, I'd say like 80% of a cheese board can be pantry items. Yes. And then you just grab whatever seasonal produce looks good and add it on. But I almost always just at home have like nuts, jams, pickles, you know, things that are like, you don't actually have to go to the store. <laughs> you just no, need to just those, have it ready. Just have those seasonal add-ons right at the end with like your fresh veg or fresh fruit. Totally. Totally. Um, would you mind flashing the, um, the slide with just like, I think there's a couple cheese boards. I don't know if it's in there. Next one. Maybe after this one. There we go. Yeah. So here are some ideas. I love that someone incorporated like some little pumpkins. That's so cute on the board, some grapefruit. So for me, I'm big on like color and texture. So that's what I kind of visually, that's how I visually build a board is I want to add in colors. So um, I think a lot of people kind of give cheese boards credit for like picnics and spring, but I totally think you can do it for a holiday cheese board and you can totally make it dramatic. Um, so if you're a retailer, my recommendation is to develop a cheese board guide that your staff can easily share with your customers this season. I suggest producing some kind of recipe template, maybe internal or external, that you can customize seasonally for your guests to help them build their board and ultimately their basket around different entertainment seasons. So you might have like a template for a Halloween cheese board, or you might have a template for an Easter cheese board and a Christmas cheese board, and then your displays can reflect that template. So maybe you have some, maybe you have something displayed, like how to build a holiday cheese board and then kind of talk through what I suggested and have some kind of visual like I'm showing here um, and then have your, your shelf reflect what's on there. Um, Cause what customers want is not to think. And so if you can think for them, you can build a bigger basket. Okay. So while, and then thank you, you can, you can, uh, you can go um, back on the board. So while we, we love our spot on the cheese board, I want cheese, I mentioned earlier, I want cheese to play a bigger role at your holiday event. Uh, like I said, why should the turkey and ham get all the attention? Like why can't cheese, right? So I'm gonna share some simple ideas to inspire you to add Laura Chanel into your holiday dishes. Um, you wanna take the same principles of the holiday cheese board that I just mentioned, you know, winter produce, winter fruit, warm colors, um, but then, finesse it a little bit and create some more refined dishes. If you're like me and you've got two little kids, you don't got time to make dishes. This is, this is all you got, pantry stuff, right? But if you've got time and you really wanna impress, here's some ideas. Um, this picture features a crostini with cherry preserves. I think that if you're gonna slave over making cranberry sauce, use it for the appetizer too. Um, do a little goat cheese um, and then, and then put, um, put some cherry preserves on top. Um, we always make way too much cranberry too. Whenever we make cranberry, always, we're like, oh no. There's always too much. There's always <laughs> so too much. The ratio to like how much people actually use is, yeah. is really funny. I always have like years worth of cranberry sauce in my exactly. fridge. <laughs> so I, I would love if we like spread, spread it out throughout the night um, and then use it on your cheese board, add it onto a little bite. Um, you know, you can stuff your green olives with any of um, our goat cheeses, but like you could definitely stuff it with, um, you know, like our, our our spreadable goat cheese, which is not mentioned today. And you could stuff it with the marinated 
um, truffle, any of those cheeses would work with this. And then what I love about this photo that you see here is there's this rolled prosciutto bite with tiny little mushrooms sucking out. They're called like enoki mushrooms. And you can add herbs and just make it really impressive. You can add it on your cheese board or you can serve it. I mean, if you have past hors d'oeuvres at your parties, um, you can totally do something like that. And then for salads, I think that yes, Goat cheese can go on any salad that around the winter time, you kind of want to like bring in that bright red color. So um, I like doing bright red beet salads, like roasted beets. And then you um, um, mix in some great um, goat cheese. If you have the, um, if you're ever making salad, you can always use the truff, our marinated truffle one. It's already got oils in it. So you can make any kind of salad with that. I like a radicchio salad with like, this picture shows radicchio salad with pickled grapes which I think is interesting. I don't have a photo of this, but um, one, one idea is to take our goat cheese and whip it, put a little bit of heavy cream and make a really nice whipped goat cheese, like almost like a whipped cream. And then you put it in a nice wide bowl and then you put roasted vegetables, roasted like um, vegetables that you would do for Thanksgiving or something in the middle. Um, I think that's a really dramatic way to display um, your side dishes with cheese. Okay, and then some other sides. You can go to the next slide, please. And really quick, and then, I was just gonna say yeah. before we move on from salads, if you are using the marinated, mm -hmm. any of the flavors, we have our three flavors, of course, truffle's amazing, but um, the, our herb and the jalapeno, you can make sure you keep the, that extra oil and you can turn it into a salad dressing yeah. right in the little container. You know, you add a little bit of vinegar, a little salt it. and pepper, whatever you like in your salad dressing shake it up right in there and you have you have your dressing totally don't waste that it's good stuff and then for sides um i just picked some dishes that you might normally already make so some roasted potatoes um to you know go next to the mashed potatoes you got to make mashed potatoes or people will get upset so always make mashed potatoes but then if you want to make roasted potatoes too you can add goat cheese um, I like to always have for vegetarians a um, butternut squash galette that I make. In this picture, it's a phyllo butternut squash pie that's made in the cast iron that you can just like bust out and put on the table. But I like to um, make a ton of this galette dough that I will use for dessert later. So I use that um, and then just, it's, it's like a no fuss pie. You don't have to make it pretty. Um, so I make that. And then, um, and then, the, then the picture on the far right is um, roasted vegetables. With, um, with goat cheese. So I kind of talked about it earlier, but that's another way to display it. And I okay. will say last Thanksgiving, I did make mashed potatoes and I added, and I, <laughs> I added some of our truffle goat cheese to them. And first I asked, was like, oh, does everyone like goat cheese? And someone said, no, I still added it. They, just, <laughs> they did not know because it just added this little extra flavor, like a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of tang. They loved it. They had no, yeah. so I was like, it's yeah. still really good. And it was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, Kelly also gave me the idea of, um, you know, your green bean casserole, typically you would use some kind of mushroom base. And so, um, you know, like truffle isn't a mushroom, but it has that kind of umami earthy flavor to it. So you can kind of incorporate our black truffle goat cheese or marinated truffle goat cheese into your green bean casserole this year. So something totally. to think about. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly, um, and a part of the meal that no one ever thinks about incorporating is goat cheese with dessert. Um, if you haven't tried goat cheese with chocolate before, you should totally do it. Um, the tanginess of the goat cheese really pairs well with the bitterness and the sweetness of chocolate. So that's an easy go-to pairing. Um, but for dessert, um, if you've got time, I would recommend like a goat cheese tart if you've ever made one. Um, so you would take fresh goat cheese um, and in the same way that you would use cream cheese in a goat cheese tart, you would use goat cheese instead and then you can top it with some kind of dramatic roasted fruit. Um, you can do a goat cheese panna cotta um, and then you can add some kumquat, like um, cook it in a little sugar and and reduce it and then throw that on really dramatic and then another thing you can do is um, bake or grill the goat cheese and then add something on top like some kind of pomegranate or cram that cranberry sauce that you have so much of you can put on top and then um and then 
Um, I told you about the galette dough that I was talking about earlier for my, my butternut squash pie. I like to use that dough and I make little hand pies. So you can make little like cranberry goat cheese <laughs> hand pies. And if you got kids, you can stick a popsicle stick in it and they can have a little popsicle pie, um, which is a lot of fun. So um, those are some ideas. And then the last picture, you see a stack of cookies. I took a page out of Culture's um, idea book and um, they basically suggested that you take some like oat cookies, like um, like Effie's oat cakes, my favorite, um, and then put some um, goat cheese in between. You know, like before I, I have two toddlers, I think I've mentioned multiple times. Um, and before I had them, I was that person who like prepared dessert throughout the week. You know, like I would create the tiers of the cake and then make the topping and all that stuff. But today I, I don't, I don't have time for that. So I love putting a package bag of cookies on the table and then let people do it themselves. Like make your own sandwiches. The kids think it's fun to make your own little um, dessert sandwiches. So I've got like Tate's um, thin, you know, Chris chocolate cookies, put that on the table. If you don't want people to know you bought it, plate it nice and then put some really good goat cheese, whip it up, you know, add a little heavy cream, whip it up in a mixer. And then you've got this delicious kind of spread that people can put together. Ain't no shame in that game. Okay. Um, so that is what I would like to share with you guys. And so if you're a retailer, um, my recommendation for you is to really um, share these recipe ideas or at least images with your consumers. If they're anything like me, um, I am inspired by images, photos. When I'm trying to think about what to make for dinner, I don't just Google search, I Google image search. Like I'll put in an ingredient or a dish that I'm thinking of. And I kind of look at dishes to inspire me. That's why I put photos in this slide. Um, I kind of riff off of images. So if you are planning some kind of holiday program, some ads, make sure you have some really great, beautiful photos of recipes that incorporate cheese. Um, and share these ideas because that's kind of our job as cheesemongers and as retailers and as chefs is to educate, to expand people's experience with food. And so if what they are know, what they know is the cheese board, awesome, but show them something else. Show them some other things they can do with it. Um, yeah, yeah. And do you have also, any ideas, you know, We're resources too. So if you if you need pictures, you know, we're happy to share what we have. Michelle and I, you know, we yeah. are eating these things. We are not <laughs> this, you know, I would say before we move on from dessert, I'd say just a quick note that dark chocolate with a fresh goat cheese is one of my favorites. And it's, I, last holiday season, I brought, I brought our cranberry log and I rolled it in like, I took a chocolate bar, crushed it up. I rolled it in that dark chocolate and people were swarming. Like <laughs> It was so it's like, we think of these flavor ideas, but then we actually try them. Um, so we're resources for you guys at any point. If you, you need to reach out and you're like, we want some ideas for this product. Um, we're here for you for that as well. And we've probably taste tested <laughs> one of the, you know, flavor combos you're thinking of. So um, feel free to reach out to us for, for those things. And our website has recipe ideas too. So check out the, our, our website for images and recipe ideas. Exactly. Yes. All right. All right. That, I'm going to pass that, the torch okay. to you. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. So, so many good goat cheese ideas. We could go on forever, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to uh, switch over to Marin French Cheese Co. now. Um, so we can bring up our slides. <clears throat> I'm gonna, Give a quick cough. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Just a little lingering cough here, but I'm good. Um, okay, so this is our full product line. Um, we're really proud of all of our products, but I'm going to be highlighting a few. Um, so if you have your products, if you have any of our cheeses in front of you, please feel free to join me or taste along. Let me know what you think of the flavors. Um, but a little bit of a backstory on Marin French Cheese Co. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So we are the country's oldest cheese company. And um, what I know that sounds shocking, but what we mean by that is 
We've been making cheese in the same creamery in Marin County um, under the same name. <laughs> Questions coming in already. I love it. Um, <laughs> so we've been making we've made making cheese in the same place, same company, continuously, nonstop since 1865. So that's 155 years of cheese making under our belts. So um, we're we're claiming it. <laughs> we are claiming this title. And our founder actually came over on the wagon trail. So if you think about the history of the United States. We're going back um, in, our, in our flagship cheese, our petite breakfast that many of you may have, are familiar with is, um, was actually created right around, um, right after the gold rush. So this was created as an alternative breakfast protein for failed miners turned dock workers on the San Francisco Bay. Um, so I just love that. There's so much history um, in California, you know, California became a state in 1850 and we became a company in 1865. So I'd say we have a little history under our wings. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and it's just really fun to keep telling those stories, keep making, you know, similar cheeses that we did right from the beginning. Um, so we make all small batch artisan soft ripened cheeses. Um, they're all built on old world recipes, but we're, our roots have always been in California. So we use local milk and uh, we really bring an innovative spirit to our products in terms of size and flavors and always innovating. Um, so yeah, so when we, when we go on to talk about our holiday offerings, um, <clears throat> You can go to the next slide. We are, so we have one true kind of seasonal product, which is gonna be our, our Brie en Croute. Um, and then we have everyday items that we really think are great for the holidays. We see an uptick in trends. I will say, I know truffle, maybe it's always trending, but it's trending again this year. So we're lucky enough both at Laura Chanel and we're in French to have some amazing truffle products. Um, something about the holidays and truffles. You're just, you just wanted something a little, a little extra, right? A little extra fancy, um, which I love. So I'm gonna start, um, so these are our products. So the Brion Crew, which I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna talk about our newest cheese, which is Golden Gate. I'm like, where's my camera? Right over here. Um, talk about both of our truffles. So it's, our smallest format, our four ounce petite truffle and our largest format, our one pound truffle wheel. Um, and then we have our Supreme over here, which is our, our cheese under the dome. <laughs> um, so those are our holiday items. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna talk about Brion Crute. So Brion Crute, it comes like this. It is par-baked. So this is all ready to go. It is our traditional brie recipe wrapped in a flaky uh, puff pastry. And you just finish it off in the oven, 400 degrees, 25 minutes, depending on your oven. Let it sit for a couple minutes. Um, you do want to serve it warm. And it's so delicious. It's so easy to bring to a party. It's just like, okay, I have my dish, <laughs> barely had to work for it. Whether people know that or not does not matter. Um, <laughs> and it, it can be paired with um, so many different traditional cheese pairings because that traditional brie, it's just light. It's got kind of a slightly sweet milky flavor with very light hints of mushroom. Like you want a, a nice mild brie to be. Um, so you, with Brion Crute, you can go sweet, you can go savory, it can be an appetizer at a party, it could be a meal for, your, for yourself or two, and it can also be dessert. Um, so, whoops, so here I have it. Let's see if you can see this. Um, I'm serving it here with just a little bit of cranberry compote. I have a little wedge over here. I did bake this one just before this. Of course, it's been sitting for a little bit now. Um, I think cranberry is just amazing, but again, any pantry jam that you have, blackberry, apricot, make it seasonal if you want, 
but pantry items are usually always there. <laughs> so um, it's great with fresh fruits as well. If you want to serve it with some sliced apple, peaches, again, seasonal for the holidays is better, but um, this is like a delicious item. And um, you can, if you're keeping it frozen, it can, you can eat it later in the year as well. Um, so yeah, I'd say traditionally you can add, you know, candied walnuts. You can also go savory with it, a pesto, a top, like an olive tapenade, sun-dried tomatoes. And you can add all, you can have all of these on the side. I wouldn't say all of them, choose what you want and have it either on the side right next to kind of the hot brion crude, or you can also the last couple minutes of baking, you can add it to the top and it'll melt right in there. I'd say if you're going to go chocolate, that would be the best is the last few minutes of baking, add some chocolate pieces to the top and it'll melt right over it. Delicious. Or you can just come in with a little chocolate drizzle as well. I think dark, dark chocolate and brion crude is super delicious. <laughs> so, um, so many different ideas for our brion crude. It does come frozen, so it has a super long shelf life for distribution. Um, it has a good shelf life once it's defrosted as well. Um, and, you know, we're just really excited about this holiday item. So if anyone has any questions about our Brion crew, definitely let us know. Um, and now I'm gonna move on to our newest cheese, which is Golden Gate, this baby. I hope some of you have it in front of you. Mine hasn't been sitting out too long, but um, the longer it sits out, kind of the more gooier and unctuous it will be. Definitely recommend serving this cheese at room temperature as most of our cheeses. Um, and, you know, at Marin French, we do make mostly, you know, we make all soft ripened and bloomy rind and washed rind cheeses. So this is our washed rind and I would say, you know, most of these cheeses are kind of made for a cheese board, right? You can add them to recipes, especially if for some reason you have some leftover, um, but they really should be the star of your cheese board or by itself, just cheese plate. Um, so, but to go back to Golden Gate, if I, maybe this is a new cheese. We did launch it end of last year. So for some of you, it might, it might be new. It looks like Maybe we had a question come through about it. It gets, it gets hand washed in a salt brine, salt water brine four times as it's aging. So it's really a labor of love, this cheese. It's very hands-on. Um, it takes a lot of, a lot of work from the cheese making team, but we're so proud of it. it it's, it's super savory because of that, <clears throat> that salt water brine really helps emphasize the coastal air by our creamery, making this a real cheese with a sense of place, a sense of terroir. Um, and it also helps lock in moisture, creating um, both a, like a deep savory taste and just that kind of gooey, exactly what fudgy kind of texture that you're looking for in a wash rind. Um, it has a little bit of funk, but it's super approachable, I think, compared to, you know, there's kind of a range of when it comes to wash rind. I'd say Golden Gate is approachable, but not lacking in flavor. Um, it's really exciting. So for this one, because it's so savory, I don't like to go crazy with the cheese board add-ons. I think more savory ones um, kind of are a little bit more fitting. I don't know if you can see. So of course I have a crunchy baguette always. <laughs> and here I have some whole grain mustard and some little cornichons. Um, I think that a whole grain mustard is actually not overpowering because it's those whole seeds. It's not that, you know, mustard powder. It's great as a little, same as the cornichon. They're both kind of like bring a brightness um, to this decadent cheese that helps you just keep going back for more. I think anything like a caramelized onion jam was great with this. Um, if you're gonna go, if you want a fresh fruit, I would stay with like a tart apple. Um, figs are great because they have that earthy note as well. Um, but lots of different options. Nuts are really nice. Um, fresh vegetables are also great. And like I said, if for some reason you have some leftover, and of course charcuterie's meats. <laughs> 
if, a, if for some reason you have some left over, uh, Golden Gate already has a vegetal note to it. I'd say some people, when they first try it, they definitely get broccoli flavors. Um, and I love that about it. That also makes it great melted on broccoli or cauliflower, um, potatoes, of course. So if you're like, or if you have one that's getting a little ripe too, and that's not exactly how you love it, throw it over some broccoli, roast it, or even throw it just on some hot broccoli. It's so delicious. Um, you can add it to, you can make like a tarte de flet, which is like a French casserole with bacon and potatoes. Um, but I'd say eat it, all, eat it by itself if you can, <laughs> because it's so delicious. Um, I'm hoping some of you are trying it right now or you're going to try it later this week. Um, I'd say we'd love to hear your opinion because it's our newest cheese. <clears throat> um, okay, so beverages, uh, beverages for Golden Gate. Again, I would say that um, because it has a sense of terroir, I'm going to say I love even a local, like a California gin. I know you're not all in California, but because we make this cheese in Northern California, we also have some amazing gins that are made around here. And I feel like those herbal notes, sense of terroir, the, you know, cypress trees around us. I just think it's a really fun play. Same with whiskey. I feel like a little bit of whiskey is great. Um, I think a dry cider is amazing. We, I Cider is really popular these days. I love this one, but I've had amazing ciders in most states. <laughs> so um, choose one of your favorite ciders to pair with it. I think it's really great. I also think this is one of the cheeses that can stand up to a stronger beer. So like an IPA, whereas most of our Brie style or Canada Bear style cheeses, it's a little delicate if you're gonna go for a heavier, uh, hoppier beer. But I think with Golden Gate, it's really fun. Um, it can handle a little, a little stronger beer and it can also handle maybe like an earthy red wine. Um, so yeah, Golden Gate, we're super excited about it. <laughs> uh, moving on to our big truffle and our petite truffle. Any classic truffle pairings are gonna work with this. Um, one of my favorites, which I have right here, is a drizzle of honey and prosciutto together. So you get salty, you get sweet, you get earthy from the truffle all in one bite. It's amazing. Um, I feel like, you know, any meats are going to be delicious. But if, again, honey, if you have it in your pantry. It's just going to bring out the flavors even more. Um, Think again, earthy things like figs. I think olives are are nice. Um, bees, if you have. Oh, and to say about this big one, so this actually it's great. Also, cut into wedges, and it does come with wedge st stickers if you're going to cut and wrap at your shop. Um, it's great added to sandwiches as well. And this little baby, of course, is so perfect for a cheese board or a picnic. Um, but I love these two sizes as offerings. Champagne is going to be your go-to for, I think, for truffle cheeses, breeze in general, bloomy rinds. We know champagne and sparkling wines are, it's hard to go wrong. Um, I also think a dry cider is really good for this one. Like maybe a little bit of a fancier cider because you really want to make sure it's not overpowering um, the cheese, but those are really great. And then I also think it's fun to play on sense of place. So these are imported black truffles from France and these cheeses. And Burgundy is one of the top truffle regions in France. So I think a white Burgundy, even a red Burgundy can go really nicely with these cheeses and kind of takes you away, takes you to another place. <laughs> um, yeah, um, for beer for these, I love something funky, like a funky fermentation beer. Um, just again, earthy on earthy. We want to pick something that complements the cheese, not overpowers it. Um, but if you're playing with earthy flavors, I think that can be really fun. So yeah, these are, you know, two that we're really excited. And then, um, last we have our Supreme. So our Supreme Dome comes in a, its own little environment. 
um, which really helps protect it. It has the fluffiest rind you've ever seen. Um, some people say it looks like a kind of a briot look alike. Inside, it's going to be fudgy and dense. It has the most cream added of any of our cheeses. Um, so it's going to be buttery, but it is a showstopper. So for this one, I love, I love it as a cheesecake, cheesecake. <laughs> um, here I have our, our Laura Chanel uh, goat brie on top, but if you have some bigger wheels, say you start with a one pound, you go to maybe an eight ounce, and then you have the Supreme on top. Um, layer it however you like, but it's going to look beautiful because it's such a fluffy rind that gets protected by its own dome. Um, and for cheesecake, there's so many different directions, cheesecake, there's so many different directions to go in. But I do love the idea. At first, it's mostly just visual when, you know, it's a visual stunner. At some point, people are going to want to eat it. So I do kind of love the idea of like an herb crown that you can just lift off once you're, once you're ready to really dive in. Um, Cause I, I find that cheesecakes are usually up on a pedestal somewhere <laughs> until they're ready to get eaten. Um, but they're, they're not, they're not going to be going away this season. I feel like they are going to be super popular for celebrations. Um, so this is one definitely to think about. Be careful when you're taking it out of the dome because it's so fluffy, it will get fingerprints, but just make sure you use a spatula when you're moving it. Um, this one, again, I'd say if, you, if you're if looking for a spirit, a sweet, a whiskey with sweet notes, it's going to be so fun for this. Um, again, champagne, sparkling wine, can't go wrong. Um, fruit forward beers, like wheat beers. And I'd say for this one, any cider, dry, sweet, any cider will be great. The bubbles will play off kind of those rich, creamy notes in your mouth, um, making for an awesome pairing. So that's kind of our, those are our holiday featured items. Um, again, mostly cheese board heavy, but I think that there's a lot to impress here with, with for entertaining so many good ideas. Would love to hear if you yeah. guys have any ideas. <laughs> I will add that, yes, I think um, unlike goat cheese, goat cheese, you can kind of like incorporate into dishes. A brie is kind of already put together. So it's kind of like hard to break down and put in cheeses. But um, I think it's like what you said. I like all the ideas that you said about it. It's really what it goes with. So having a lot of fun, different um, sides, sweet and savory on the side dips, spreads. So when you're cross merchandising, our breeze you want to think about those things that they can pair with the breeze the breeze is already a great base already good by itself but having a lot of fun things that people can put around it is awesome and don't forget that a brie you can bake so um, you can stuff it into a puff pastry and make a little cheese thing or if you've got leftover turkey you can make turkey brie paninis the next yes. day right so <laughs> there's things that you can do with brie you can melt brie that's the thing that we can count on um, and then I love all of Ke Kelly's uh, um, drink pairings. That's awesome. If, you're, um, if your staff and employees don't feel as confident as Kelly with like, you know, they're not as familiar with recommendations because that's, I mean, customers will do that. They'll go to the cheesemaker and think that they're also a som, but they're not. <laughs> and, um, and so one thing to always say, and Kelly's already said it over and over, and I always say is um, champagne. You can't go wrong with sparkling wine. It's totally. bubbly. And that goes for all cheeses, not just the breeze and not just for goat cheese. You can't go wrong with sparkling wine. It's bubbly. It's actually, you know, the reason why we love to have a soda with a greasy pizza is because all those bubbles are like kind of on our tongue and help us taste, you know, the pizza even more. And so um, that's what we want when we're eating cheese and like our tongue is coated in that fat. You want something bubbly to kind of wash yeah. it. So. I always bring a bottle of sparkling wine yes. with my cheese. Yeah. And, it, and again, we're, we're here as resources. If you want ideas for drink pairings, I actually am working on a little pairing tool for the Marin French cheese website as well. And there are lots of cheese board ideas, recipe ideas under each product on our website um, that 
I spent I spent some time thinking about and tasting. So um, just reach out to us if you're looking for ideas or you have an idea and you're like, do you think this would work? We, we're happy to help you. Um, so great. I'm just going to talk about St. Benoit here quickly at the end before we move into questions. Um, so St. Benoit Creamery. So St. Benoit, all of our products are all about the milk. Um, I think we lost our <laughs> slides, um, but we get our we get our milk. It's 100% organic from one one herd of pasture raised Jersey cows, um, right in Sonoma County, close to our creamery. It's the best milk you can find. So Saint Benoit, we're really about the ingredients, knowing exactly what what's in what you're eating. Um, we try not to mess with the milk, so it's. Um, gently pasteurized. It's local. I went to the farm. It's, it's, it's everything you want in a farm. It's amazing. I was there last month and I was like, this is heaven. So um, our Jersey girls make the best products and we are featuring our um, little pot de creme organic desserts. They're kind of like French style puddings. Um, and we have four flavors, but for the holidays, we are featuring Snickerdoodle because why not? Snickerdoodle is perfect for the holidays. And you can go to the next slide. <clears throat> this one, I mean, of course it's delicious right on its own. It's in a sustainable little jar. Uh, the labels do come off if you wanna reuse these little jars. And I love it on its own, but also with a ginger snap cookie, you can either dip it right in, spread it on or crumble it. Of course, you can always put this in another, another bowl if you want a, a little nicer presentation. But um, I also went with Tate's today. <laughs> the uh, ginger zinger cookies, I feel like are so delicious with this. Um, and just a crunchy cookie adds a little bit of texture. But um, pot de creme desserts, I think they kind of, they speak for themselves. They're delicious. They also come in our local Cho chocolate uh, flavor, vanilla and salted caramel. Salted caramel is my favorite, it's to die for, but snickerdoodle for the holidays, super fun. Um, so yeah, I think that leaves us open for any questions or comments. Do we, did we have any come in in the chat? We um, did have a question about uh, which distributors carry Golden Gate. Um, so which, which distributors have Golden Gate in stock currently is the question. Yeah, so I would check with your local specialty distributor. Everyone has access to our cheese. So um, it's just a matter of them ordering it. So even if they currently have it in stock, um, you need to talk to your distributor about it because it, it requires about a six week um, lead time. Um, so from your from buyers to just, you know, from the retailer to the distributor then to us. So you need to like a lot of wiggle room. And uh, we, we don't uh, make this cheese in large batches. So um, it just requires some advanced planning. So my recommendation is that you reach out to the distributor you're always, you're already working with and then um, have them reach out to us. Um, you can email me directly at michelle at laurachanel.com um, and let me know where you're from and I will connect you with that distributor that I know already has it authorized. Um, there's a number of them, so um, I won't go into listing it, um, but yes, someone said Chef's Warehouse. Yes, Chef's Warehouse is authorized um, with Golden Gate. You just need to give them a lot of lead time so they give it to us. Is uh, loss we different from Golden Gate? It is different. So we. It is, I'd say a revamp, <laughs> but it is a different recipe. So it's not exactly the same as Schloss. It's not just a rebrand. Um, we did spend a lot of time working on the recipe. Um, so it's not, it's not just a new name. It is a new cheese, but I have yet to find one Schloss lover that has been disappointed. So I encourage all Schloss lovers to try it and let us know what you think. But I love that you know what Schloss is. That's yes. awesome. That's your, you're an OG. You know, you know us. Yeah. Love it. Um, also, someone mentioned that they couldn't see the cheese board. I apologize. I popped the image of my cheese board into the chat. So just download that photo and then you can get a shot of what's in front of me. Aerial shot. Um, uh, does anyone yes. have any like flavor combos that they love? Oh, Schloss coming back. 
no, sorry. Golden Gate is here. <laughs> Schloss <laughs> will not be coming back that I know of. Um, you know, we are, we're continuously working on innovation and we do hope to offer some new products in the near future. But um, for now, we feel like Golden Gate is, is holding its ground for our wash rind cheese. It's great. Uh, we did have a, a couple of comments of combinations. Uh, Jessica said she ate her um, Saint Benoit pot de creme uh, last night for dessert and added a swirl of Nutella, which sounds Ooh, amazing. Yes. Um, she's also asking though about where I know Saint Benoit is not is maybe not quite as available as the cheeses are. I know those pot de creme products aren't. So can you guys talk about that? So um, St. Benoit is definitely increasing distribution. We, um, the shelf life is longer than it was when we first released them. So now we are open to all the way to the East Coast. Um, we are hoping to pick up a little bit more of distribution. So we would love if you asked your distributors to bring it in. Um, but it is, you know, if they already carry some of our products, you can definitely um, just inquire about it. Um, and we're happy if you want to reach out to us afterwards, I'm happy to give you more info. Yeah, it's great. not as widely distributed, your good point, because of the shelf life. So it, it's just yep. a matter of a, a distributor may not have a ton of it in stock because they want to make sure they have a customer for it. So just ask your distributor um, and we can definitely get them connected. Um, there's another Michelle in our company, Michelle at stbenoit.com, not me, yes. uh, but you can email <laughs> her and she's our brand manager for St. Benoit and she'd be She'd love to get you connected about how and where to get it. So make sure you email her or you can email me and I can direct you. They're such unique products. Um, I got lucky to taste several of the flavors and I, I agree the salted caramel is my favorite too. Kelly, but oh my gosh, they're it. all so good. And there's nothing else like them, I don't think on the market. So yeah, wow. there's, I mean, it's really about the ingredients. They, we're not using powdered milks or fillers. It's really just whole ingredients that you want to put into your body, but also enjoy an amazing treat. I like to say they're both kid and adult friendly because <laughs> really they are, right? Yep. Oh, and also desserts. Said... Sorry, just quick thoughts. So yep. Also desserts are like a newer, prepared desserts is a newer category for the States. If you go to France, there's like a whole wall. Of prepared desserts but here it's kind of a new category which is why you don't see it as much it's kind of harder for us to push our way onto the shelf because um it, there's not an existing shelf for it so it's growing but we hope that you'll see more of us great and amy higgs has pointed out that uh east coast folks can get saint benoit through world's best cheeses each east and kihei in maryland is an option i thought she was talking about um golden gate so I didn't, I didn't apply that answer, but that's great information, Amy. Thank you very Thanks, much. Amy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And somebody asked if you can freeze the same, the Le Buen, Saint Benoit desserts. They said Le Benoit, but it's Saint Benoit. Oh, I have not tried that. Um, I don't know how comfortable are we freezing glass in general? I know it's sometimes it's fine. Um, I would love to experiment and try that, but for me, I have not tried freezing it yet. I haven't be, tried it, but I am sorry. Go ahead, Susan. Sorry. No, no, no. Go, go, go. I was just going to say I was concerned with the headspace because I know that the jar is filled, and I know when you freeze glass, you need space for the material inside to expand. Yeah, there is exactly. a little space, but again, I don't know. I'd be nervous. <laughs> I would be too. Yeah, and, and I would say that freezing something can really change the texture of it. So while it might still be edible, it may not have that kind of creaminess it might separate yeah. you know you, when you freeze random like desserts like it just doesn't work but yeah. um, it has enough fat in it that I wonder if it would like kind of be a nice like mousse yeah. I don't know maybe something would be trying. a good experiment I might take it yeah. out of the jar and like freeze it into like little like I don't know frozen balls or something <laughs> but yeah. um <laughs> yeah but yeah, I totally. love the idea could yeah. definitely try it mm hmm Great. Like a lighter Lindsay, ice cream. Kind of like ice cream. We mm -hmm. are 
We are right at 4.59, you guys. So thank you so much, Michelle and Kelly. This has been fascinating. I've gotten so many great ideas for my own holiday entertaining. So this is awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. And I really appreciate everyone being with us today. And I hope you have enjoyed it. This video will be on YouTube if you want to watch it again. Also want to mention we've got lots of great Laura Chanel, Marine French, uh, et cetera, um, pairings and ideas on our website from all the many times that we have worked with you all. So um, thank you. And I'm going to say goodbye and, and turn it over to you to, to say the final goodbyes. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. I, I think this is great. And like Susan said, we have, uh, we also have an upcoming summer pairings ideas with culture. So keep an eye out for that. I know we're talking about the holidays, but we're still in summer. Um, thank you everyone for joining us and we will see you next time. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for spending the afternoon with us. We look forward to seeing you at a, an event sometime soon in person or here. Hope everyone has a great rest of your week.